what's up guys, CP Motor here, back with another video. Now recently we did a video comparing cheap versus expensive RAM and, well, I've even still got this stick of RAM right here. And basically I concluded that for gaming, there wasn't exactly the world's biggest difference between this cheap little guy and a super expensive option. So yeah, RAM doesn't make much of a difference. Anyway, so today I wanted to apply that same logic and actually put it through to the SSD side as a lot of us love super fast SSDs and that concept is really great to take a look at. Now, as I said, everyone loves a fast SSD, whether we're looking at NVMe drives, SATA drives, SSDs are very popular when it comes to the gaming system market. But do we really see a difference in performance when we are looking at the SSD side, not only in gaming performance, but also to general day-to-day -day tasks differences? And is there really a benefit of spending a lot more on your SSD than if you didn't spend a lot? Well, let's go ahead and find out today. Now for testing today, we grabbed a number of drives from both SATA and also to NVMe me classes with our very cheap option coming in with the inland professional 480 gigabyte drive and our highest spec option being the sweet Samsung brand new 970 series in the 500 gigabyte option now I tried to get as close to 500 gigabytes as possible so 480 on the cheap one 500 on the most expensive and the reason for choosing this kind of price tag is because it strikes a really good balance today here in 2018 between actually getting some decent storage without spending a whole arm and leg sure 500 gig drives can be pretty Pretty expensive but at the same time we're not spending as much as say 700 800 terabyte 2 terabytes or something along those lines so we went for that option now the other drives that we test were well right here on the screen there are a number of different drives here from again the SATA interface family and also to the NVMe drives out there for a nice big range now yes I can hear someone already yelling at me in the comments section that of course there's a difference NVMe drives are much faster than SATA and I should not be testing SATA drives with each other. Well, to be honest with you, that's a fair test. If you are going to be spending more money on an SSD, you're going to be comparing SATA versus NVMe. The point of this video is to see if you were going to spend more money, what kind of a performance difference you're going to get, rather than testing NVMe versus SATA. Sure, it's definitely going to come down to that, but I did pick up a number of SATA drives and also to a number of NVMe drives, so there is a bit of a range if you did want to specifically look at two different technologies. And don't get me wrong, we'll definitely bring up the differences in technology throughout this video but do keep in mind yes this is technically not fair but if you are buying a new SSD and you are going to be spending more money you are going to be comparing SATA versus NVMe so obviously keep that in mind so deal with it anyway so for today's testing I paired up the equally over kill expensive SSDs with the lower paired ones with the GTX 1080 Ti and the 6950X with 32 gigabytes of RAM for maximum performance now no the performance isn't going to be changed whether we're running a 6950 DX or a 7700K, but I had them on hand, and hey, why not run some high-end hardware for these kinds of tests? Again, not really going to make much of a difference comparing your numbers to mine in terms of the actual SSD performance. It's mainly just for games, so I can have a nice gaming experience while I do all these benchmarks. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks. Enough talking from me, let's take a look at these numbers. And the initial synthetics are, well, kind of to be expected, with the budget option coming in a little bit on the lower side compared to the obvious busy higher end options out there with the SATA SSDs on sort of one side of our graph and the NVMe guys on the other with well, a nice big difference between the two. Between the NVMe drives, there isn't exactly the world's biggest actual difference going up in terms of price point, and that's also too reflected on the SATA side. Just because you're spending five, 10, $15 more on a SATA SSD, we're not getting as big jump as if we were going from the super cheap option through to the most expensive option. So kind of a little interesting takeaway from the synthetic side. And this is also too reflected if we go ahead and do our game load tests and also to just our general generic gaming FPS. No drives do not actually affect your gaming FPS, but I definitely know someone out there is going to ask me, hey CP Modder, how does this affect FPS? It doesn't. They're all just about the same and within margin of error of each other. So in terms of actual using it in day-to-day -day gaming, it was just about the same whether we're looking at SATA or NVMe as the bottlenecks start to run into other locations when it comes to actually loading up 
files. SSDs are plenty fast enough even on just their SATA options. Now one thing that these performance numbers don't exactly show is longevity and reliability. Sure the inland option is one of the lowest cost guys that are actually here and it actually stacks up relatively okay. Sure it's not the greatest in all the tests that we did do today but all in all the performance isn't too terrible when compared to a hard drive. But what we don't know is the reliability and how this guy's going to stack up when we write 100 terabytes to it, 200 terabytes to it and actually use it on a day to day basis. Things like the Samsung SSD, SanDisk, WD and all those other really well known brands out there are a known quantity there. There are no numbers out there. We do know what previous generations performed like so we can make an estimate as to what future generations will perform like and not to mention these well known brands also too have well known internals whereas the inland drives are a bit of a dog's meat of breakfast and if you want to find out more we did a big showdown and you can learn more about these drives there. Anyway whereas the lower cost options also too don't really have the same features and aspects that the more expensive ones deliver. Great example is when these drives start to die. A lot of drives such as the Intel drives, the Samsung drives, even some SanDisk drives and a lot of other really good quality ones out there when they start to die they'll enter a read only mode allowing you to take all your data off it but you don't actually able to write to it to do any more damage whereas some of the super cheap options don't have this kind of feature and you may be using your computer one day and the next day it might be totally dead. Not to mention things that come with the drive such as software experiences, support and also to accessories are generally a lot less on cheaper options than they are on their expensive brothers. Samsung great SSDs do go ahead and actually offer you an option to buy a kit to help you upgrade your laptop so it comes with a little adapter and all those little bits and pieces that you need to take a hard drive out of your laptop and put in a new SSD whereas your low cost options don't have have these options. So all in all though when it comes to pure performance yes there is a big gap between the least and most expensive drives on the SSD front. Mainly thanks to the fact that expensive drives are now all NVMe drives whereas the lower cost options are generally all SATA. However when we do comparisons between the SATA drives and also to the NVMe drives when we are looking at maybe 10, 20 or even $30 difference we're not exactly seeing the world's biggest performance difference as we are going from the least to most expensive options in the performance performance front. In terms of day to day operations this also too reflected our synthetics and also to gaming load times and gaming tests in general also too reflected these numbers where the lower cost options definitely came in okay but they weren't as good as their higher end NVMe drives. And as I did mention there's a lot more to it than just gaming performance and performance in general there are other things like warranty support and longevity of the drives that we can't exactly test in one video because we need hundreds and hundreds of hours to do these tests and unfortunately we just don't have that. So what should you get? Well obviously the thing in the middle. Something that's giving you the best of both worlds in terms of pricing, performance and also to all round specs and longevity. Buying the very cheapest and buying the most expensive isn't really going to be your best option so try and get yourself in the middle is generally where you want to be. But whatever drive you do want to grab I'll leave them linked down in that description box so you can find them all there and whilst you're down there let me know in the comment sections what drive do you run in your system? Do you run SSDs at all or are you old school and only run mechanics? Mechanical. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.